Hello everyone, welcome back to Zeros TV. Today I'm joined by Ivan Chosevic of Breakout Point. We are data and analytics provider sitting here in Germany in city of Düsseldorf. Our services revolve around big shorts and meme stocks. We started with short selling and then these interactions between uh, short sellers and uh, retail investors, it becomes a huge multi-million uh, community. But short sellers uh, or active short sellers are on and on a niche, but they are very impactful niche. Ivan, thanks for joining me today. Thanks for having me on, uh, Mike. Exciting uh, uh, month and a half behind us. Absolutely. Well, let's get into, you know, just first off, the, the overall numbers. Let's talk about... Uh, short report activities, um, and then once we kind of cover that, if you could just give a sense for how performance has played out as well. You know, exciting and very, very busy uh, weeks. So we had uh, only in April 10 new short calls and reports, and already uh, now in the first 10 days of uh, May, uh, five reports, so that's uh, 15 altogether. As we all have seen, markets have overall been uh, quite weak, and uh, uh, the activists uh, have had uh, success. Uh, Citron, uh, uh, well-known uh, uh, publisher of uh, of uh, short and long uh, long calls, also jokingly tweeted that uh, uh, they might return to public short selling, and maybe this will mark uh, now the end of the weakness. Because famously, uh, after they uh, stopped publishing uh, short calls uh, after uh, GME, uh, the markets. Uh, kind of started going down so that was an interesting joke on their side but uh, you know uh, there is overall weakness and we always get asked is there alpha really in the short calls when there is so much weakness and indeed in, indeed uh, there is a lot so basically what we had uh, over past month uh, S&P uh, is down about 10% uh, while on average these 15 short calls that were published in uh, April and begin of May are down 24%. So we compare 10% in uh, S&P to 24 on uh, these uh, short calls. Wow. Well, how do they stack up against everyone's favorite benchmark, right? Against the ARC complex? Are they outpacing Kathy to the downside? Um, or are these names sort of holding holding their weight uh, against Kathy's names? I mean, uh, RK continued uh, to be uh, weak. RKK is down uh, about another 40%. So a uh, running joke that we, we see occasionally on uh, Twitter is that uh, RKK is actually inverse of uh, SRK, which is <laughs> short RK ETF, <laughs> so, which had a uh, fabulous performance, obviously. So. And in your work, have you, have you seen any certain themes coming through? Are these primarily SPACs that, that the short side is going after? Are they in certain sectors? Are they in certain regions? Can you give us a glimpse into that? Sure. I mean, it's uh, pretty much, I would say, uh, business as usual. So we have seen a, a reasonable number of uh, U.S. names, some uh, uh, names out of uh, Asia, and also uh, thesis-wise uh, has been uh, not so unusual. We did have a very two... Uh, two very interesting uh, social media uh, shorts, uh, so maybe I could uh, elaborate a bit on that. So uh, the one that got uh, a lot of uh, attention was uh, actually a short call by Hindenburg on uh, Twitter. So this is... Uh, basically on a basis of overvalued uh, private deal by Elon Musk. So uh, Hindenburg argues that uh, now with uh, overall weakness in, in uh, markets, uh, uh, the deal uh, could be uh, uh, repriced. This should make also Tesla shareholders happy. So interestingly, Elon uh, uh, Musk did respond to Hindenburg uh, research and uh, kind of ask them to be more optimistic to look more on the bright side <laughs> so and that's an interesting uh, uh, question Hindenburg did respond to that and so on so basically are activist short sellers or publishers of these short reports are they by the nature pessimists or are they actually naive or believers in the change so basically optimists so uh, 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 if they uh, publish all these uh, short reports that uh, is also because they believe they can achieve a change with them for for the better so that's kind of uh, taking optimistic view to to the world yeah it's interesting that you say that because you know looking at their hindenburg's comments it does seem like 
they do believe the deal will ultimately close and they are in support of it. So it's just more so on the valuation side. Uh, you know, I think there was something in, in their comments about, you know, the breakup fee from Elon would be about a billion, but given the overall market weakness, he could probably save multiples of that if he lowered the deal price, just given overall market conditions. Yeah, so maybe they are real, realists in this case, not the uh, pessimists as, uh, as Elon uh, said. So, and uh, uh, kind of connected to that, uh, there is uh, another uh, social media short that came out this month. And this short, at least the thesis uh, posed by Carisdale on the DVAX, so famous uh, uh, Trump social, uh, truth social uh, media, the thesis of Carisdale they did took temporarily uh, backseat because so much focus uh, has been on uh, uh, this uh, Twitter deal by Elon Musk and then implications for DVAC and so on. But basically what uh, Carisdale uh, argued uh, some weeks ago is that, uh, you know, there is big regulatory risk uh, with uh, uh, DVAC. So that's a spec short as well. And uh, that, uh, you know, the business model uh, they alleged it might not be sustainable. So basically, Carisdale doubts that the uh, uh, Security uh, uh, Commission will uh, step in and uh, uh, force them to drop this uh, uh, merger to a company linked to Trump. So let's see how that plays out. Uh, let's say for now, it's uh, it took a bit of a backseat, but uh, definitely interesting one to watch in the months uh, going forward. The shares are somewhat down, but not, uh, not uh, very much seen uh, since uh, uh, they published. Well, if we could, I, I just want to pivot uh, really quickly because we touched on another popular, popular theme last month with the crypto community. Jim Chanos was, was targeting Coinbase purely on a valuation, not, not any nefarious activity, but more so on a valuation basis. Um, I think we have earnings coming up tomorrow. So could you just give us a little glimpse into that as, as the market prepares for Coinbase earnings? Crypto markets plunged and uh, Coinbase is down 60% since uh, uh, Jim uh, called this publicly, called this short. So basically, even before the earnings and before uh, we have seen the numbers, the, the Coinbase is uh, very much down at the new all-time lows. It's really interesting so uh, to see how earnings uh, uh, play out here. And, you know, Jim Chanos is not really a vocal supporter of crypto, so we are not really sure if he hedged with some other crypto exporters, this Coinbase. Uh, so uh, uh, probably, you know, he did uh, very well with it so far. So. Well, we've covered a lot here in the U.S., but if we could, I'd like to just pivot over to Europe because I read in your report that there's some new developments with Adler Group and Viceroy Research. Could you just uh, give us some more detail on what's going on in that land? Sure, it's a partial uh, vindication for uh, uh, Viceroy Research on this uh, on this short for them. So basically, what uh, happened uh, recently is that uh, their auditor refused to sign off uh, 2021 financial result of this uh, uh, German real estate uh, group, and uh, uh, the stock uh, plunged further. So. Uh, Weiser recommended uh, basically it's uh, 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 RIP time, so rest in peace time for, for Adla, another short seller that also holds a short there. So Bronte Capital and Jim Kempton, Hampton, uh, they called it uh, basically a zero now. Uh, let's see, you know, it's another bad look for uh, for German markets uh, following uh, uh, other developments which we had, uh, had in the past. There are also some comments uh, from uh, uh, companies, so they did admit uh, that there is weakness in corporate go governance, and they uh, uh, did admit that there was some uh, inappropriate uh, attempted influence, but they did deny that uh, there is uh, there has been fraud and deceit. So interesting one to 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 further watch. Yeah, definitely a lot going on in in uh, not just the short selling space, but it seems like there's a lot of news flow uh, as well. I did see a funny comment that you made and in uh, your message over to me and you call it the two bills. Uh, what is going on with Bill Gates and Tesla? Oh, yes. So uh, 
basically, uh, according to to Elon and also some uh, some uh, writings in media, Bill uh, Gates uh, might be called the uh, big uh, Tesla short. <laughs> so uh, uh, because uh, he apparently, uh, according to Elon Musk, uh, has or had uh, uh, a significant uh, short position there. So there were some uh, uh, comments uh, from Elon. Uh, I think Bill Gates also briefly commented in media that uh, this is, uh, you know, not uh, against uh, EVs per se, but it's, you know, about uh, specific valuation, uh, if I recall well, as he commented. And it's interesting to see. So, you know, I'm all in favor of a new uh, Amazon uh, documentary or, or series with, uh, uh, you know, uh, Prime Original with uh, Bill Gates and uh, Elon Musk. So big short uh, 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 2.0 or whatever. So let's see. Maybe Jeff Bezos picks it up. <laughs> Who knew that uh, Bill Gates is such a great trader? You know, I, I think the elephant in the room for the short selling space and, and SPACs and the whole growth complex imploding is Bill Huang. Can you give us any detail that you were able to gather from the indictment that was recently released in his, in his uh, arrest? Why is this, first of all, maybe step back, why is this so uh, interesting in uh, in terms of uh, short selling? So a lot of people from uh, your audience obviously know this already, but several names, um, most famously uh, got you, so GSX, uh, uh, were subject of uh, uh, not one, but several short reports. And uh, basically what happened after the first report issued by Grizzly Research uh, back in February is that shares went up. And not little, but they went up. Uh, uh, I think uh, they even tripled uh, from, from initial report. And this was an amazement of, of all short selling community because allegations were very uh, substantiated, very material, very serious, and, uh, uh, and so on. What happens uh, uh, since then? Shores, shares lost all of these gains, and then they uh, uh, pretty much totally crashed, and they are now more than 95% lower than where uh, Grizzly and uh, several other short sellers uh, uh, published their reports. And as it uh, turned out, uh, uh, Bill Huang uh, uh, played, uh, seemingly played a role in this. So there is now uh, there are serious charges in uh, uh, alleged massive uh, stock fraud by uh, uh, this uh, fund and uh, Bill Hong. So uh, basically, it's interesting uh, to see what happens there. So Muddy Waters did uh, uh, tweet about it and uh, uh, commented on uh, how how especially G6 uh, uh, story uh, did develop, and uh, this might be the one to mark this, as you mentioned, the big road, big 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 tech end of end of that. <laughs> end of that story so uh... yeah i think for anyone that hasn't had a chance to read the indictment it's really long so you know you don't have to read the whole thing but just skimming through it really is mind-blowing to see the things that were going on the leverage he was employing across all the different banks that you know supposedly didn't have an idea of <laughs> everything that was going on um, non-disclosure as well so yeah, and it you know it's it's fascinating because it seems like the implosion of Archigos sort of coincided with the peak of this growth and and SPAC bubble, and you know I think a lot of the fallout you're seeing now um, are big funds that kind of got trapped into these names, all in similar names. And now it's sort of unwinding in, in very brutal fashion. So, you know, I would encourage anyone to to go and take a look at that indictment just to wrap your head around exactly what he was doing and, and how it really impacted the market. Amazing story. I, I fully agree. And let's see what, what, what happens in the months to come with that. So. And you had an interesting uh, short very recently on Zeros. Uh, so we have seen uh, uh, Scorpion uh, focusing on uh, uh, IonQ. So, uh, and that's also working out uh, very well, I think, so far for Scorpion. So maybe you can uh, add a few words about why did they focus on this uh, uh, about 1.5 billion tech company? Yeah, so Kier stopped by and... You know, it was another SPAC, and they've taken aim at a lot of SPACs over the past year or so. And you know, really, the thesis behind it was that 
there's really no business that exists. The technology that they claim to have, which is this 32 qubit quantum computer, just doesn't exist. And the existing technology that they, they do have for clients is worse than just running simple math in your head. So, uh, you know, there's related party transactions, there's uh, questionable background for the management. This one has everything. So it was, it was a great piece from Kier. And uh, anyone that hasn't seen that chopping block, I, I'd encourage you to go take a look. Uh, to totally agree. So uh, definitely worth uh, worth uh, uh, attention. And uh, same as uh, previous work of, of uh, Scorpion. So they have a amazing uh, uh, track record. I, I mean, IonQ already after one week is down about 40%. So uh, another another one, uh, another success for, for them. So, uh, yeah. I think we've touched on the negative side of all of these growth and SPAC companies, but you did send me a, an interesting piece um, about the potential for maybe some relief in the, in the near term. Could you expand on uh, you know, what you read and why, you know, maybe the fortunes may be changing, if it, even if it is for a short-term bounce? Yeah, I mean, in our, in our especially in our uh, Twitter feed, uh, we, we have seen here and there some uh, short sellers, uh, uh, you know, uh, well-known members of uh, Fintfeet, not necessarily publishers of short calls, but, uh, you know, people that are known to, to, to be looking at uh, great short opportunities. We have seen them closing some of the shorts and commenting how, you know, the the, the shares did did go down uh, uh, a lot, uh, uh, to even to their amazement and so on. And on top of that, we have seen also uh, just uh, some days ago, Gotham City Research, so they are also have excellent track record in terms of uh, uh, public reports uh, focusing on, on a short side. And so they didn't publish in a while, but they are occasionally uh, active uh, on their Twitter handle. And uh, basically, they did warn of uh, a counter-trend rally. So they say, you know, probably this uh, uh, big uh, bearish trend uh, uh, is here to stay, but the counter trend rally risks, uh, according to Gotham, are increasing. So let's see, the markets uh, are uh, uh, still where they are, uh, are still uh, uh, as of today a uh, week, and uh, let's see if we see some uh, uh, relief uh, uh, rally soon. It's always interesting when the uh, typically, the most bearish guys, uh, uh, as, as short sellers usually are, see some uh, uh, such uh, bounce opportunities if they materialize later. Well, Ivan, it's been great having you on. There's there's definitely a lot going on in the world of short selling between the news flow, the reports, the, the great performance. Thanks again for stopping by, and hopefully we can do it again soon to touch on the activity in May. Excellent. Thanks so much for having me today. 